Hi, I'm Paris, talking today about the upcoming solar eclipse that will be visible across all of North America. In fact, a swath of totality will cross all the way in the U.S. from the West Coast to the East Coast. And if you live in that area, you will get to see the total solar eclipse, where the skies go dark, birds go to roost, superstitious people go into caves and give all their money to charismatic leaders. Yes, it's coming. Are you prepared for this? Have you got your year? Have you made your travel plans? If you live somewhere near the path of totality, your hotel reservations, checking out the weather, checking out the traffic, so you can experience this, what might be a once in a lifetime opportunity. I actually saw the total solar eclipse, the very last one that occurred in North America. Yes, way back then when we did live in caves, it was in 1979. I still have my sun peep mask from the Pacific Science Center so I could view it safely. Let me tell you about the gear. Let me tell you about some resources where to find out the best places to view the eclipse and reminisce a little about my high school friends and I driving through the night across the mountains to get to a spot where we could see this amazing event. Yes, I still have my solar eclipse viewer from 38 years ago. I don't know why they only set it to work with one eye, but um, they have improved this a little bit. A company called Rainbow Symphony actually sent me out quite a few. Thank you to Rainbow Symphony for sending these out. They sent me samples of their solar viewing glasses, oh, the better part of a year ago. And at that point, you could actually have some custom printed for yourself or your organization and uh, advertise on the glasses. But now that the event is so soon, they no longer offer that. But you can check out their website and you can still order solar viewing glasses from them from the link down below this video. I've been excited for some time about this upcoming total solar eclipse because way back in 79 when my friends and I saw the last one, we made an agreement that was so amazing and you know they know in advance when the next one will come, we knew it would be, we'd be much older at that point, but we agreed we would all get together wherever we were, whatever we were doing, we would meet up and watch that solar eclipse in 2017 together. But it just hasn't worked out. Life happens over the course of 38 years and one friend I can't get a hold of now and the other is going to see it in Idaho with his family, which is really cool. The problem is that here in Austin, Texas, they've uh, bumped up the start of the school year. So August 21st is the first day of school for my daughters. Now I'd be okay with them missing a day of school to drive up to Kansas City. That's the closest place uh, to Austin, I think, that we'd be able to see the eclipse in its totality. But they're not so keen on missing the first day of school, so the best I can do is to send them with these extra solar viewing glasses so they and their classmates can see the partial solar eclipse, which everyone in North America will be able to see. I think from here in Austin, we'll have about a 50% eclipse, which means the moon will cover about 50% of the sun when you have your safety glasses on. Number one rule of eclipse viewing is you have to wear the proper protection for your eyes so you don't damage them. But when you look up at the maximum, you'll be able to see the sun and the moon, the curve of the moon, blocking out about half the sun. Probably not enough to really make a difference, like you look out your window and say, oh my, it's getting dark out there. Probably not enough to have that effect. You actually have to get fairly close to it being a total eclipse before it gets noticeably darker. But in any case, we're going to be sitting out, being in a location to see this eclipse in its totality. Now, in the places where you will see the total solar eclipse, it'll be for about two minutes. That's how long you have the disk of the sun completely covered by the disk of the moon. So you'll see it at a quarter and a half and 75%, and then you get to see the coolest thing of all, which is when the moon, the size and shape of the moon, just perfectly matches in front of the sun. And you can see the glow of the sun and even some of the corona shining around it. It's really amazing, trust me. It's worth going to a lot of effort to see this. We'll pass this time. Turns out we don't have to wait another 38 years, good for me before the next total solar eclipse will pass through North America. That one will be April 8th, 2024. It's gonna come across northern Mexico, right across Texas, almost right on top of Austin. That's an eclipse that comes to you. And then it will continue uh, across the US up to about uh, Maine, Vermont. The next eclipse is coming to me and Jimena Roxana will be about 20 and 23 at the time. So it should be really nice 
to have that shared memory to be able to watch that eclipse all together. But if this is the one for you, you got to get out there. Just a note, things are not to scale. But the eclipse will begin out in the Pacific Ocean. The shadow of the moon will fall out here and will cross land at 9.05 a.m. on the morning of Monday, August 21st, Pacific time. Cross into Oregon. Now the actual shadow of the totality zone will only be about 70 miles across. That will move across the U.S. And it will exit the U.S. in South Carolina at 2.48 p.m. Eastern Time and then continue on for a bit more out into the ocean. Now that was the path of totality. This is more like the path of where that you can see some of the shadow, basically all across North America, from Alaska all the way down across Mexico. This will move across over the course of several hours. So no matter where you are here in North America, with the right eye protection, you'll be able to go out at the right time and see some of the sun being covered by the moon. So can you see it from where you are? Well, if you're in North America, you can see something. Can you see the sky go completely dark? Well, that's it in a swath about 70 miles wide that will completely cross the U.S., but only in this 70 mile range will it be a total solar eclipse if you're looking. A great site to check out for this, and I'll put a link to it down below this video, is NASA's eclipse site. The black band here that goes across the middle of the map shows in a little more detail exactly where totality is visible better than my demonstration. Here are the times in some locations so you can get an idea of what time of the day you'll be able to see the most if you're not able to see the total solar eclipse. Now, eclipse begins, eclipse ends, that indicates when the first little piece of the sun appears to be covered by the moon. Totality begins and totality ends, that's the maximum you're going to see. If you're in that 70 mile swath, it will get completely dark and you'll be able to see all the super cool stuff. If you're not in that 70 mile swath and you don't have the afternoon to spend watching this happen, the best time to go out and look is probably during the time of totality because that will be the maximum amount of the sun you'll get to see being covered by the moon. All of this in all of these locations is all weather permitting. If you're not in that zone of complete totality, how much of the sun will you see covered by the moon? You can see the percentages here on this map. Find approximately where you are. This is why I think in Austin, Texas will be around 50% or a little more. Well, if you're thinking that might be worth a family trip to go see something so cool and amazing, maybe load everyone up in the car and make it a road trip, here on this website, greatamericaneclipse.com, and I'll link to it down below this video, they give you a lot more detailed information about the main viewing sites, which means towns and cities along the way, the advantages of seeing it in one place rather than another. They talk about the hotel situation in those locations and the traffic situation, as well as which sites are most likely to have clear weather because you can plan for this all you want, but if it's cloudy where you are when it happens, it's just a sad thing. So what do you need to see this event? Whether you're going to stay at home and watch a partial solar eclipse or travel to that area where it will be a total solar eclipse, you need the right kind of eye protection. Whether it's $5 cardboard eye protection glasses or $15 fancy looking men in black, I can see absolutely nothing glasses. I'll link to Rainbow Symphony that sent me all these different pairs to try out down below this video. I'll also link to a couple Amazon sites that are selling them. The main thing with the glasses is that they be CE certified. That means that the material used to make the eye protection is correct. And ISO certified, as best I understand it, means it meets the uh, construction and quality guidelines for a protective eyewear. So if it's CE certified, and ISO certified, those are the glasses you want to look for. Now I've done a couple Eclipse videos previously, so I'll link to them at the end of this video if you'd like to see. I'll show what it looks like looking at a partial eclipse through this type of lens. It's February 26th at 8 a.m. My two best friends in high school and I decided we were going to go see this and uh, we had to get up in the middle of the night and we had one friend that we actually had to wake the parents up who then had to go and wake her up but they got her up, got her in the car. We drove across the mountains from Seattle to Eastern Washington through the ice and the snow and the slush. And we actually were late getting to where we had wanted to see it. So we just pulled over at a, a roadside rest area that had a little hill in it, as I remember. And there were so many people there because they also realized they weren't gonna get to the town or wherever they were headed to see it. 
So it was sort of by default, maybe two to three hundred of us ended up on this little grassy hill, still freezing cold early in the morning, all of us looking at the sky with some sort of eye protection, fortunately, hopefully everybody had that, watching as the last steps of the moon covered up the sun, and then the sky really did go dark. You could see stars. It looked like nighttime, but in the sky was this glowing edge, and you could see, actually see the lines radiating out from it. It's really amazing, and seeing a picture of it does not do justice to actually looking up in the sky and seeing that going on. And you don't get long to see it. It lasts about two minutes from the time it gets completely dark to when, again, the, the moon moves away from in front and the sunlight comes streaming back in and it brightens up so quickly afterwards. I've always gone out of my way to get out of the city to where it's really nice dark skies, when there's going to be a comet, when there's going to be a meteor shower. I really like those things and they impact me quite a bit and they're all the nicer if you can share them with family, with friends. So it's a great experience to share together. I strongly encourage you, if you live anywhere near that zone of totality, make the trip 100 miles 200 miles a few hours drive to go that day and see it if you miss this one they do occur around the world much more often uh, South America is going to have one in 2019 another one in 2020 and for our viewers in Antarctica 2021 but if you can save the cost of world travel and just for the price of a tank of gas to go see it that's the way to do it. And if any viewers actually get to see the total solar eclipse, I would love to see any video or pictures that you take to hear about your experience. So in August, I'm hoping to live vicariously through viewers for this great event. I'll be back soon with more reviews and news of major celestial events. You can keep checking back for those videos or you can click that subscribe button down below. You'll get notified when our videos go up. And while I have a light and a globe, I can't resist doing this and crawling on the planet's face, some insects called the human race, lost in time and lost in space and meaning.